everybody, I'm Julia. Welcome to Julia at Home. This is the first video in a series where I'm going to be planning for our 2020-2021 school year. I will have a second grader, a kindergartner, and a baby. She will be 18 months in the fall. To be honest, I am kind of always thinking about curriculum and writing down notes when I think of it and um, some of my planning gets a little messy, but I'm going to try as best I can to streamline it for you and break it down into steps. And um, you will just follow me as I go ahead and formally plan this year. So for this first step, really for the first few steps, um, I have a, some tea, which is not necessary, but is nice to have. I have my computer, my laptop here. I have just a plain, spiral bound notebook that I, I picked up honestly at the grocery store when I was grocery shopping one day. I have a pen and a pencil and I also have my nice markers which are also not necessary. I do use, um, let me put my tea down for a second. I do use an Erin Condren teacher planner. Their new ones um, for 2020 are coming out in April. So if you're interested, keep your eye out for that. I will be ordering mine. Um, but I, I always, regardless, I always start planning in just a plain notebook. Um, you could do it on the computer as well. I just like handwriting it. And um, I move into this once it's a little bit more organized. The only thing I wish I had this for was the calendar, but I will show you how I do that um, when I get to that step. I got my tea. I got my other stuff. Let's start. My first step today is going to be making a list of the subjects I'm going to teach each child and then figuring out what subjects we can combine and what needs to be done individually. I want to note that what I'm going to do is step two could also be your step one and that is figuring out your calendar for the year. Um, so I will come to that in the next video. But for right now, um, let's just start with making those subject lists. I do want to say that I'm assuming that you've already thought through a little bit of what your um, homeschool is going to look like. If you haven't already and you are a beginner, go watch my how to start homeschooling video. At this point, um, before you dive into planning your curriculum, I would want you to have an idea of why you're homeschooling, what kind of method or style attracts you the most. And also, before we start this step, just have a quick look at the homeschooling laws in your state. It's legal in every state in the United States. Um, but there are different requirements and my state requires me to teach certain subjects and I know that a few others do as well. Most of them don't. Some just require a number of days. So just check that out before you start because you're going to need to add those subjects. Make sure they're on your subject list. Okay, so getting started here. This is obviously not my actual desk. <laughs> I am, I'm working my bedroom because there's more light in here and... I want to see outside. So <laughs> here I am. All right, so I have three children. Um, I've got my second grader. I'm just gonna make some lists here. Um, my second grader, I'm gonna have a kindergartner. Whoa. Okay, kindergarten is really hard to spell. So I probably just spelled it wrong and I apologize. And then, um, so I'm gonna make a column for each of them and I will come back to her at the end, but I also am going to have a toddler and she's going to be between about 18 months to two years here. Um, actually might make that more like one to two years and I will get back to why <laughs> in a little bit. Um, okay. So because my son's starting kindergarten, I'm actually, both of them are going to be more Charlotte Mason based. So one of the first things I'm going to do is I'm going to get on my computer here and I'm really, I'm going to try to screenshot this for you and we'll see how this works. For those of you doing Charlotte Mason, one of the first places I like to do is Ambleson site online. You can see I've already been looking at it as well. I'm just going to go ahead to their year two. They have the different years listed out here. Um, and that their year two is equivalent to my second grade. Um, Charlotte Mason actually had different forms. So she had form, I think like one B was first grade and then one A was maybe second and third, but 
we don't need to get into that right now. So I'm going to look over this and I'm, I'm just looking for right now at what the subjects they're teaching are. So you can just go on right down this list here. Um, and I'll keep scrolling so you can see here. And this is a good way to do it. I actually, I'm going to come back up to the top here. I actually like to click on the weekly schedule here and um, I'll just open up the PDF version of it. They have different versions. So depending on what capabilities you have on your computer, you can open up. this is their chart for the week and I'm not following the chart right now, but it just, for some reason in my mind, makes it easier for me to write down the subjects. So for, um, so they have Bible as the first subject and I don't, I don't teach Bible, but um, I kind of turn that into like a spiritual, oh, if I can spell spiritual, well, this might be embarrassing, um, slash character, um, history, we'll definitely be doing history, uh, natural history, I would just call um, science slash nature. She basically just had nature and natural history instead of uh, traditional science for younger children. Uh, literature. Um, it, it looks like poetry is under literature, but I'm going to make that a separate topic there. I honestly can't tell. Um, let's see. Then there's, there's, of course, there's math. There's handwriting. There's reading, there's foreign language, there's geography. So they have things listed a little bit different here. There's recitation, which I think is usually part of Bible. We're going to, we'll do recitation with poetry. Um, so I already put geography down. Timeline, because I'm, I'm looking at the weekly work list. I believe that's incorporated in history, so I'm not going to write that down separately. We're going to do art, just art, um, art slash handwork here. And then we're also going to do artist study or picture study. That's the, essentially the same thing. Um, and we're going to do composer study. We're also just going to do music, which for my daughter is going to be piano, but again, just subjects right now, just big overall subjects. And she does folk songs and hymns, which I'm going to actually combine into seasonal songs. And honestly, they don't all have to be seasonal, but mainly songs. <laughs> okay. So it looks like that is all of the subjects they have listed there. I'm also going to go back here and take a look at their um, year zero, which is their kindergarten year, um, just to, to look again at what they're doing. Again, I don't follow this exactly, so it's going to look a little different. And hopefully my internet will work for me right now. So... Yeah, they don't, they don't have a specific curriculum because um, Charlotte Mason wanted you to hold off on academics until the child was six. So my son doing um, kindergarten, he's going to be, he's five, he will be six next March. So um, they suggest, they just have like a list of books and stuff here. But I'm actually going to do subjects with him. I'm actually just going to work off of my daughter's chart here. And um, I think pretty much everything I'm doing with her, I'm going to do with him as well. So I'm, you know what? I'm not even going to do a separate list right now. Here is what I'm going to do instead. I need to look in another place. I'm also using my own, uh, you know, thoughts here. I'm, tr I'm just trying to think. I don't think there's anything that... I would personally add that I think we're missing from this list. Um, oh, yes, there is. I would add practical 
life activities, which could be chores or just other things that I want to make sure they know how to do before they leave the house. Um, then there's another place I need to look, and that is in your state and if your state requires something. So I am, I am here on, um, in Vermont, they call it home study. And I am going to, I'm just trying to make sure I find the right place here. I'm going to have to uh, make a minimum course of study. I'm just trying to just find the list of the things I need to teach, which is not the easiest thing to find. But here I am. I mean, I'm, I know I, I have an idea in my mind. I kind of know already. And I could look at my daughter's MCOS from last year. So that's another option. I have her minimum course of study for this, this first grade year we've been doing and um, a portfolio planning checklist. So really, I could just look at this and I know I'm going to have to add a few things. So we've got language arts covered here. Um, we've got English, American, other literature. So um I just need to make a note here that I need to, I don't know if they require English American, but I, I think I'll have some in there anyway. Um, math. So citizenship, history, and government in Vermont and the United States. So um, we're not at this step yet um, as to the detail of what I'm putting in. I'm just looking at the individual subjects, but I'm going to, again, make a note by both history and geography that um, I need to do some Vermont slash U.S. focus. Um, so, for example, this year we're doing ancient history and there's, you know, not really a lot to do for Vermont and U.S. and ancient history. So we have been looking at um, symbols for the state of Vermont. So um, looking at the flag, looking at, um, I guess, the hermit thrush um, is the state bird, and I think the red clover is the state flower, and the sugar maple is the state tree, so things like that. Um, okay, physical education I do not have on here, so I need to make sure, we'll just shorten that to PE is on here, and health, I don't have health on here either, so that needs to be added. Science is on here, right, right, yes it is, and fine arts is covered already, so but I'm going to go ahead and look on the computer as well and see if I can show you. It gives you information on the timeline, on everything you need to do. Um, I will come back and do a separate video on how I am doing all this. Here they've kind of listed things out here and they give you examples of what they're talking about as well. So basic communication skills and reading, writing and math. As I said, Vermont, United States. Uh, literature. So also... Um, I know that they're looking for, um, uh, what, is, what do I want to say? I, somewhere else they mentioned that they want at least like a list of 10 books that you've read. And so I try to plan out to have at least 10 books in combination with our read, read alouds and literature. I'm going to go ahead. Um, I am not doing Montessori for either of my big kids now. Okay. Let me rephrase that. While I may incorporate some Montessori materials, especially in math, I am not planning out a full Montessori curriculum as I have done for my preschool the past few years. He's going to be entering kindergarten and um, I, I feel like we've gone through a lot of the basic sensorial and practical life and all that. Um, so I will not be doing a Montessori based preschool curriculum this year. However, I want to make this as helpful for you guys as possible. So I'm going to, to kind of make one up on this page here um, <laughs> so that you can see how I might do that. And for other, other methods, you're going to start with other um, lists. So if I'm doing Montessori preschooler here, um, I have physical albums, but I'm going to go online here to Info Montessori. And um, again, I suggest doing a little bit of research. There's also a great book, Basic Montessori by David Getman um, and some other resources that you could follow. Um, but I'm going to look here. If you can actually see along the top here, it lists the basic, uh, <laughs> the basic subjects that you will be doing 
with your kids in a Montessori preschool. And part of this depends on the ages. So they're all going to start with practical life. And, um, and this starts at a young age. And then um, you will add in sensorial also when they are young and language will look different for different ages. Math, you don't introduce until they're four um, in the traditional AMI. AMS, they might start a little bit younger. I honestly started my, uh, well, okay, I started on numbers with both of them when they were a little younger than four, both my daughter and my son, because they were just really showing interest in numbers. And so I kind of went with it. But I did hold off some of the formal lessons with my son a little bit longer. And I think just the, the basic guideline is follow the child. So this would be what I'd have for um, my Montessori list. Now, I also added in like a circle time. So um, it was basically like, you know, um, poems, songs, and finger plays. And I would also add in just like nature. <laughs> um, and we were often doing um, a read aloud. So there's other things that you can incorporate, putting read aloud slash literature. So this would be kind of like I, I'm adding on, right? Or art. <laughs> so, um, but these are the basic Montessori um, subjects that you would start with for preschool. And th there's going to be more once you get to elementary. I haven't really, um, I haven't explored the Montessori elementary as much because I have transitioned into more of a Charlotte Mason style for that age group. But that's where you'd want to start in this step there. Now, I'm actually going to come to my toddler because I do Montessori activities for toddler, for my toddlers. And she'll be, well, she'll be one in June. Um, and so some of this, it's, it's very age dependent, but I'm going to put language. We can do language activities. Now, this isn't going to be, I'm not starting her at one with the sound game or any of the, you know, the reading sequence. If you see my Montessori reading video, um, it, it's going to look, uh, it, 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 yeah, it's not a traditional Montessori material, but I just want to make sure we're working on language development. And then um, basically fine and gross motor skills. So this is going to include some practical life activities that are aimed at toddlers as well as some sensorial activities aimed at toddlers. Um, you can see my Montessori toddler activity video here. I will also link that and I'll be looking back over some of that as well. Um, again, the age, it's very, very dependent on the age. Kids, when they're little, they grow and develop so fast. What a 15 month old do, can do is different from what an 18 month old and two year old can do. So, and each child is very different in their development. So I'm just gonna highlight these three areas and, um, and just make sure that I am coming up with some ideas and that I'll be prepared to do some stuff with her. Again, it's gonna be super simple. And she joins us for everything else anyways. Okay, I'm gonna back up now. The next part is figuring out what subjects need to be separated and what they're gonna to do together. Now, again, they're, they're basically working off the same list here. So this is when I'm gonna get out the optional markers. <laughs> I got my, my Aaron Condren markers in here. And I think, okay. I like to color code my kids. I think I'm gonna use the light colors today. So I've got my kindergartner's gonna be blue and my second grader's gonna be pink. It would make sense for the stuff for them to do together is purple, but my baby is purple. I'll pull that out for her. So <laughs> I think I am going to do green for the stuff that they're doing together. It's spring, it's pastel season, right? <laughs> so I'm going with it. Okay. All right, so here's what I'm gonna do. Things that we're gonna do together. Spiritual character work. Um, and again, right now I'm not deciding exactly what I'm doing for that. Um, yours might be Bible here. It might be um, Torah. Or the Quran, it might be um, mythology, um, or you could just leave that topic off altogether. Um, history will also be together. So science and nature, um, I think is going to be together. I usually do it together. I am thinking of adding some extra stuff for um, 
my second grader here, mainly because science is um, a special interest of hers. So um, we come back to that literature. I, I read to them the literature we do together. Um, she, um, I have to decide if he's doing, yeah, she, he won't be doing copy work, I don't think yet this year. Poetry we do together. Math is separate. So I'm gonna math. Oh, and I'm already messing up. Hold on here. <laughs> Let me underline these in this color. <laughs> ah, okay. He is blue. So here we go. He's gonna do math on his own as well. And she's got handwriting. Again, they're at a different level here. So I'm going to put copy work here because that's mainly what she'll be doing for handwriting. And he will be working on his handwriting. And he is still working on, you know, getting the letters down. I start them with cursive. Reading. She will be reading um, and doing her reading program. He will be learning to read as well. So I'm just going to put reading down for him. What they're doing in these subjects looks much different, but the subject is the same. So again, we're just starting with the subject. Foreign language. Um, so we've been, hold on, wrong color. We've been doing that together and I'm going to continue doing that together for right now. I don't think there's a region to separate them at this point in time. At some point I might have her start reading and writing in the foreign language before him but I don't think we're going to start that this year. Um, okay, geography, also together. So you can already see this makes it a lot easier that these subjects are all combined. I don't have to sit and teach every recitation is, I mean, we do it together. Um, they, I often have them choose different things, but we don't, um, I might, I might just do like I might do kind of a, a mix here. We generally work on it together at the same time. So it's not something we do at a separate time. Um, okay, art and hand work. Art we do together and I'm gonna do that. Um, hand work I sometimes do separately with them. So I'm actually gonna make that, that's he's, see? <laughs> Messy, messy person. Okay. Okay. And artist study together. Composer study together. Music is separate. So she takes piano lessons and I'm planning on continuing that for her. And he is going to have his own music because I feel like it's important to have um, a background in music. I just, it's a personal thing for me, I think is important. Um, seasonal songs will be together. Practical life activities. Some of it might be together and some of it might not. So, oh, seasonal songs. Because some of it is stuff we're doing like together, but some of it might be um, like individual, like teaching them how to do individual skills. So that's kind of a combination. Um, let's see. PE, I honestly don't worry about overly much. It's kind of separated sometimes as she does horseback, but I honestly don't know when we're going to get back to horseback with everything going on. I'm going to put it as together for right now. And, um, I just, yeah, the thing I'll put down for the, minimum course of study will be together health we do together right now as well okay so you can see by the amount of green <laughs> that most of the subjects we're doing we're doing together um, so that is really helpful when you have multiple children that you can combine things and then you're not sitting there doing a full course individually with each child that just seems very very daunting um, I'm going to come, oh, one more thing I'm going to do while I'm here. I'm going to get a different color just for fun. Okay. It's springtime. It's her color. I'm going to come here. There's some things that we'll do in our circle time. 
um, that I just want to note. So like seasonal songs, um, recitation, poetry, um, those are all things that are just incorporated into our morning time. There also might be some spiritual character, or sorry, in our circle time, I should say, in that as well. Um, and I should note, we do, so this is our circle time. Ooh, here we go. Okay. All right, so that's for my second grader and kindergartner, my first step. I now know what subjects we're gonna do so I can kind of dive deeper into each subject. I'm gonna go ahead and also do, um, just look at my toddler here. I think that some of the language activities will just be her joining us during circle time um, for the most part. So it'll partially be that and then the rest are all it, it's kind of a combination. The rest are all baby things that she's just going to do on her own. Um, so that's where I am with that. But she does, I do have her joy. She's like, she's around. So I'm including her in the circle time. She'll hear our poems. And I will choose some songs specifically for the baby as well. Right, so that is my first part done. So I'm ending this first video here. Please click the thumbs up button below if you liked it and subscribe if you want to see more. My next video in the series is going to be talking about how I'm planning the year on my calendar and organizing it. And then the next step will be going on to fill in what we're doing on the subjects, which is my favorite part. So hold tight. We'll get there. Um, thank you so much for joining me and I will talk to you later. Mm -hmm.